We live on a planet with just the right set of conditions to support the development of life. On no other planet in our solar system do you get the same percentages of oxygen, water vapour and carbon dioxide necessary to support the delicate balance between photosynthesis and respiration that allows all of this to happen. Last lesson, we spoke about the composition of the Earth's atmosphere. And today you should be able to answer the following questions. What is the most common gas in the Earth's atmosphere? What fraction of the Earth's atmosphere is oxygen? And name two gases that make up 1% or less of our atmosphere. You might want to pause the video here while you check your recall. Don't worry, I'll wait. Done? Well, you should have found the questions pretty easy, and you should have come up with the following answers. The most common gas in Earth's atmosphere is nitrogen. Oxygen makes up approximately one-fifth of the Earth's atmosphere, and you could have given any two of the following for the gases that make up the last percent. Argon, krypton, helium, or carbon dioxide. We should avoid talking about water vapour here, because the amount can vary so much across the planet, being anything from close to zero to as high as 4%. However, Earth's atmosphere hasn't always been like this. Today we're going to talk about where Earth's atmosphere came from, how it has changed over the lifetime of our planet, and what's caused those key changes to happen. What follows is the story of how Earth got its atmosphere. It's a story that goes back to the very creation of our planet. From a cloud of dust and gas surrounding a new star somewhere around four and a half billion years ago. Now, there are two popular exam questions that we need to prepare for here. One simply asks for the age of our planet which is widely accepted to be about four and a half billion years old. The second is why we can't be sure of the steps in the development of our atmosphere. And that answer comes down to the fact that this happened four and a half billion years ago. And frankly, four and a half billion years later, there isn't much evidence left for us to find. Be prepared to give those answers if you were asked to by the examiner. So, what I'm gonna tell you today is our best view as scientists of how these things happened. In the center of a cloud of dust and gas, four and a half billion years ago, a new sun had recently begun to shine. The leftover materials continued to orbit that star and gradually produced fields of asteroids, which struck each other and stuck together, forming ever larger spheres of molten rock and metal. Eventually, those large lumps cooled enough for their surfaces to become largely solid. They had become the planets and moons of our solar system. Many of the gases that make up our atmosphere were already there right then at the very start, arriving frozen inside those asteroids or as chemical compounds within them. Now, I feel I need to give you some evidence as to how we can have any idea about what the Earth's atmosphere was like four and a half billion years ago. Well, most of our evidence actually comes from looking at our two neighboring worlds, Venus and Mars. Planet Earth sits about 150 million kilometers away from our sun. Venus is about 40 million kilometers closer and Mars about 70 million kilometers further away. Given the dimensions of our solar system, we can regard this as our neighbourhood. All three planets should therefore have formed from similar elements in similar proportions, and so all three planets probably started out in very similar ways. Today, both Mars and Venus have atmospheres that are very high in carbon dioxide 
it's therefore reasonable to assume that the Earth's atmosphere would have started out in the same way with the atoms and molecules that make up our atmosphere arriving embedded within the rocks and dust that came together to form the planet. Some of those atoms would have arrived in chemical compounds and some as the elements themselves. To support this claim, if we turn our telescopes to the dust clouds elsewhere in the galaxy, we can find the same sort of element combination within them. So this is the early Earth. A red-hot ball of lava with a thin crust being continuously bombarded by meteorites. As the planet cooled and a stable crust formed, volcanoes would have covered the surface of the planet, pumping the more volatile chemicals out to form our atmosphere. This early atmosphere would have been nothing like the one we see today. There was no oxygen, and the temperature was well over 100 degrees Celsius. It would still have contained some nitrogen, but even that would have been bound up into ammonia in some cases. The atmosphere would have been mostly carbon dioxide and water. Given the air temperature, there would have been no liquid water on the planet's surface, and the atmosphere would have gradually become more dense as gases were released from the Earth's interior. However, the composition would not have changed much. The first real change to Earth's atmosphere would have happened half a billion years later as the temperature fell low enough for liquid water to form. In short, it started to rain. It would have rained in volumes and duration that are unimaginable today. Millions of years of huge storms would have gradually filled the low-lying regions of the planet, turning them into the first seas and oceans. The atmosphere may have had less water vapor in it, but it would not have been any more hospitable. It was still carbon dioxide with proportions of nitrogen compounds and methane. There was still no oxygen. However, the seas were about to make their first of their large changes to Earth's atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is slightly soluble in water, and so the CO2 in the atmosphere began to dissolve into the oceans and seas. Some of it would have reacted with rocks and formed carbonate compounds, trapping some of that carbon dioxide within the Earth. The atmosphere would then have gradually had less and less carbon dioxide in it, but there was still no oxygen to breathe. Some of the nitrogen and carbon compounds in the atmosphere would have been dissolving into the oceans. And in this chemical soup, something fantastic happened. The first life on Earth began to develop. It wasn't complex life, these were some of the simplest bacteria we have ever discovered, but they began to grow and thrive. And as the generations passed, they slowly began to evolve. About three billion years ago, the first photosynthetic bacteria developed. These creatures could produce their own food using sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. Now, this is a good opportunity for the examiner to ask you about photosynthesis, and you should know both the symbol and the word equation for this reaction. So that's carbon dioxide plus water turning into glucose and oxygen. And as a formula, 6 CO2 plus 6 H2O going to 6 O2 and the formula for glucose, C6H12O6. This process changed everything. As we've already said, there was a lot of carbon dioxide around. So as far as these bacteria were concerned, this meant that they had all the resources they needed to grow and reproduce. Over the next billion years, carbon dioxide levels dropped steadily. The oxygen produced in this process would initially have been trapped in chemical compounds such as iron oxides. 
but eventually there was enough left over to start filling the atmosphere. The oxygen levels rose to something similar to that we have today, and this enabled organisms that did not use photosynthesis to start to exist. And that, in short, is as much of the history of the Earth's atmosphere as you need to know. So, to recap the key points. The Earth's atmosphere formed from gas molecules released by volcanoes. The atmosphere was largely carbon dioxide and water vapour with small amounts of ammonia, nitrogen and methane. The Earth cooled and the water vapour condensed to form oceans. Carbon dioxide dissolved into the oceans and became trapped as carbonate compounds in rocks. Photosynthetic life began about 3 billion years ago and used up much of the remaining carbon dioxide, releasing oxygen. Earth's atmosphere was then effectively pretty stable from 2 billion years ago until the present day. When answering questions about Earth's atmosphere, stick to these facts. Do not expand into present day changes as any changes we make to the atmosphere are very small by comparison and on a very different timescale. You should now pause and make sure you can write out how the Earth's atmosphere developed. This was a six mark question on an AQA exam paper a few years ago and it could easily be asked again. Make sure you practice how you would write it. <laughs>